Bhagavatu Sahanao Bhunaktu Sahavirya Karavavahai Pejas Vinavadhi Tamastu Mavid Vishadahai Aum Shanti 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 Namaste. I'm very happy to announce the rebranding of our channel as Chandra Mukti Vedanta Meditation. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> well, in our recent videos, we discussed superimposition, Adhyaya and how this phenomenon of superimposition leads to the delusion of material consciousness where one identifies with the body as the self. However, the same mechanism can also be used in meditation to identify Aum or other aspects of the Supreme with material symbols both subtle and gross, leading to meditation directly on Brahman. See, the problem in material consciousness is that we are identified with something outside of our self. The mind, the body, various designations pertaining to them, possessions, activities, the modes of material nature, sensations, etc., etc., etc. Long list. To attain enlightenment, we have to disidentify with those things and come to a complete identification of the self with Brahman. That is Mukti. And Chandra, of course, means the moon. The moon is one of those meditation symbols that has common uh, attributes with Brahman. For example, it's bright. It illuminates not only itself, but other things as well. And it's beautiful. And it's far away in the sky, high above. <laughs> there are so many points of similarity between the moon and Brahman, the sun and Brahman, and light, and space, and so many other things. And this information is given in the Upanishads, and it's summed up in Vedanta Sutra. So in Vedanta Sutra, there are more than 20 different ways to meditate on Brahman through various symbols using superimposition. In the first pada of the Samanvaya Dhyaya, first chapter, the Sutrakar takes up Upanishadic terms referring to the manifested world, Akasha, space, prana, life energy, jyoti, light, and shows that they really refer to Brahman. The second pada takes up terms referring to the human body, and shows that they refer to Saguna Brahman. The third pada similarly refers to Nirguna Brahman, Parabrahman, or Brahman without qualities. Now it's very difficult to meditate on Brahman without qualities. And because of this, we have evolved over time several different layers of superimposition or indirection or abstraction from the original object of meditation into so many symbolic forms. And this has become religion. So we're saying you don't have to be on the third level symbolic form of religion. 
you can be on a first level direct superimposition between Brahman and one of its qualities in nature, such as the sun or the sky or so many other examples. So what we're going to do is go sequentially and in a detailed way through each and every one of these meditations. And as we examine each one, we're going to go into the Upanishadic context in which it's found. So in other words, we're going to demystify the Advaita and the Vedanta and show you that it's actually, it's not so difficult to understand or practice. And we're going to be establishing a series of courses, both online and in person in India. And we'll have more announcements about that later on. But just briefly, I've been invited to come to India and have audience of the current Shankaracharya of Puri regarding this project. And also a very high sannyasi in the Ramakrishna order has stated, has sent a message to me that he would like to see these practices revived. So I have taken this up, even though I'm not in any of these orders, I'm an independent sannyasi. That's all right. We are all one big family of sannyasis. Maybe we have different designations or whatever. But what really matters is that we are committed, we are dedicated to Vedanta and to helping people understand the Advaita in a simple way so they can realize it for themselves. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.